Okay, remember they're changing my voice. Okay, the reason why there's a lot of people um, trying to stop me from explaining things has to do with the difference between the divine order and the worldly orders. It also has to do with the difference between the Trinity argument and the argument that Christ's soul is not God. The easiest way to understand it is already put in nature for all to see. It is the irrefutable fact that the sun symbolizes um, it symbolizes God and the bridegroom's connection as like a gate. So the rays of the sun are not equal to the sun itself. And neither is the Holy Spirit equal to God. The source is greater than the spirit that emanates from it. And neither am I equal to God. God is in charge. God is the Father. See, in, um, I believe it's John 14, 28, in the story where Christ is a character, says that, that God is greater than he is and that they should be happy for him that he's going back to the Father. The sun symbolizes the idea of a gate, okay? So I am the gate and the sun testifies as a pattern in nature that I'm the gate. I am the way to rally to me. Now, why is this? Now, let's look at primitive peoples back in Africa. There was, there was a time when people had to choose sides. They had to choose a chief, a leader. Some people went toward those people who were more animalistic, more beast-like. And this is what is meant by the mark of the beast. It is the boundaries. It is the deal. It is being on board on the same ship, going the same way, on the same path, in the same way as those people whose inclinations is to be what I usually call earth huggers, right? They're psychological construct huggers. They're social norm fanatics. They choose to live by mere social norms instead of by higher principle. They try to confuse you about this because there's a lot of European uh, secret societies and social clubs like the Pilgrim Society, the Club of Rome, the Freemasons. There's tons and tons of these groups of people. Round Table Group, uh, Bohemian Club here in Northern California, okay? And, and, and countless, countless more. There are hundreds and hundreds of these groups. Some of them have millions of members, very powerful members, millionaires and billionaires. The Club of Rome has former presidents and world leaders. So they want to confuse you about the divine order. Their, their philosophy is materialism psychology okay and they use chemistry uh, and technologies uh, to confuse this but you see God is natural okay to, he's supernatural to get to the supernatural you have to go through natural so the divine order is an order of people that get to the essence of justice and righteousness and these principles of nature it's not an order of theater arts or psychology it's not an order of mere human customs, rules, traditions, and concerns. It is an order of martial art principle. Martial arts are life styles, life directions. And all the divine nature of martial arts and religion will die when my flesh dies and will return to God Almighty. I am the gate. This is the end. How do we know it? We know it because of reason. When God gave man the tools he needed to find clean water so he wouldn't get sick and die, okay, man had to use reason. His brain was developing to understand logic, wisdom, reason, deductive reasoning, critical thinking, deep thinking. When we think carefully and we consider generational gotten gains in the various groups and tech and breeding, we see that there's no possible moral path after my flesh dies. Now, if you don't know who I am, you look at a world and you say, hey, there's no possible moral path in the future because of technology. Can you trust the governments of the world to treat you fairly and not hack your brain when they admit that they can read your brain and, and companies are concerned with people hacking people's brains to figure out uh, their passwords and to get access to their files, what have you? No, 
If you can't trust the government not to hack your brain and you have no way to know whether or not you are even thinking your own thoughts, then it is immoral to reproduce. Also look at the particular way the nations of the world govern their people. They govern them in a way that is pure evil. There's scientific racism, social Darwinism, sexual sadism, corporate sex cults. They make the rules in a way that is purely disgusting. One only needs to think just a little bit to quickly come to the conclusion that political parties and social clubs are part of a system of lies and deceit. It says in the Bible that Satan leads the whole world astray. If Satan is already leading the whole world astray, how much more when there's advanced technology? So it is immoral to reproduce. And of course it says in Luke 23, blessed are the childless women, the breasts that never nursed and the wombs that never bore. What time is he talking about? He was talking about now. If this is what happens when the grass is green, when the vine is green, when there's life and righteousness, what will happen when there's advanced technology? What will happen when people are gaslighting people and there's organized harassment and no one rallies to do the right thing in, in the country that's supposed to be the freest country uh, in the world. So we can see because of logic, even if you don't think of it in terms of martial arts, you see that there is no logical and righteous and wise and just reason to keep reproducing. And those who do have accepted the boundaries of thinking like a mere beast, which is losing their mere emotions and their worldly sense of direction, instead of a divine sense of direction to stand upright, to be raised right, to be righteous and on the right path, concerned with the right things, with the right motives and goals. So, in a nutshell, when they misunderstand John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning, as far as man is concerned, was the actions and intentions and motives of God. The Spirit of God is part of the dominating principles, the dominating characteristics. And it became flesh, how? Because a righteous vessel received it, okay? The, the word is also the draw, drawing in the martial spirit of God. Exodus 15, 3, the Lord is the warrior, the Lord is his name. So drawing it in, whose hands have gathered up the wind. Proverbs 34, who holds the wind in his fists. New Living Translation. Who drew the spirit of God? When David said to Goliath, that this very day I'll strike you down and cut off your head and the whole world will know that there's a God in Israel. He was referring to drawing the spirit of God into the world, into the flesh, and then striking down Goliath with it. And that's why Christ said, in, as a character in the story, that he's the root and offspring of David specifically, because that's how the Spirit came into the world. And it cannot come in the world, and neither can people go through the gate into heaven, because there is no valid martial path after I die. So therefore, it cannot be done. pretty straightforward okay when you think about focused moral intensity and righteous indignation it is clear it is clear-cut if there is no path for wisdom to travel there is no going to heaven the narrow road revelation the end comes Proverbs 8 20 Wisdom walks in the way of righteousness along the path of justice. That is the wise direction. The other directions are beast directions, mere human, mere human rules, customs, and concerns. See that in Mark 7. Well, I'm about out of time, so I'm going to leave it there.